I'm going through my memories right now to find clips to add to this video and I just found this video where I was in Senegal with friends and I made them listen to this poem over lunch naturally. It's called Storage by Mary Oliver. I feel like it's way more relevant now than it was when I was reading it because just before I got here I emptied out my storage unit in LA. There's no more trace of me there and it felt really good but I, I kind of want to read it. I kind of want to read it. This isn't gonna be a spoken word vibe, uh, but I'll try my best, I don't know, I don't know. It might be cringe, I don't know. When I moved from one house to another, there were many things I had no room for. What does one do? I rented a storage space and filled it. Years passed, occasionally I went there and looked in, but nothing happened, not a single twinkle of the heart. As I grew older, the things I cared about grew fewer, but were more important. So one day, I undid the lock and called the trash man. He took everything. I felt like a little donkey when his burden was finally lifted. Things, burn them. Burn them, make a beautiful fire, more room in your heart for love, for the trees, for the birds who own nothing, the reason they can fly. I just remember really loving this poem when I was trying to decide what I wanted to do and um, it feels a bit full circle. I didn't necessarily intend for it to be an eat, pray, love year, but in a lot of ways it has been consequently. And it's ironic because a question I always used to ask people was where would you go if you had an eat, pray, love year? And I guess the first thing I've learned is that you can't go anywhere with the expectation that a place will offer you anything. It's up to you to decide how you show up, what you're willing to sacrifice or let go of, how uncomfortable you're willing to be, and in what ways you're ready to be open. You have to not be scared to go away. Obviously, I think a lot of people are frightened that if they go away, if they disappear for a while, everything will crumble, they'll come back and there's no place for them. I think the break, actually, being away was good for us all because it gives you a chance to realise why you're doing what you do and actually want to do what you do, not just do it because you're already there and you're on the roll. Bismillah. Bismillah. I don't want this to come across as if I've had this like big awakening and I've figured it out and I'm so much wiser now because that's absolutely not the case at all. And I'm also not trying to teach anything. I'm simply here to share my thoughts and experiences. And I know the way I view life and live my life can be a bit unsettling for people who love to be realistic. Like I'm not that mature and I try to be responsible, but none of my advice, I think, not much of my advice would bring someone directly closer to conventional success. Like if you're trying to be on the Forbes 30 under 30, I'm not your girl. I want you to be happy. Also, there's no way that I could sum up the last couple years in one video. So I know I shouldn't try to, but my ADHD brain may attempt to. So bear with me because at the end of the day, one of the bigger things I've learned is that everything ties back to everything. So if I don't finish a thought, I probably will eventually, if not in this video, at some point. I guess we should begin with how we got here because the way it happened wasn't necessarily as I intended for it to happen. What happened was so much better, alhamdulillah. So if you're new here, First of all, hi, salam, marhaba, welcome. I lived in LA for a few years and I was planning on moving from LA to New York, but in between, I wanted a couple months to just take a break. I wanted to travel and I had this freedom of not having to pay any rent or bills or you know, kind of be tied down to somewhere. And I wanted to use that to my advantage because I had felt like I'd kind of lost my place in LA and I didn't want to go to New York with that same energy. So initially I was quite intentional about using that time wisely and it was only supposed to be a couple months, but by the time it was supposed to end, I didn't want to live in New York anymore. I didn't feel like I was ready or that I wanted to go back to this world that moved really quickly 
again because I didn't want to move that quickly again, especially because I didn't think that was the direction I wanted my life to go in anymore. And I knew that every single decision I made had to honor what I actually wanted. So for many reasons, I didn't think it was wise to move to New York at the time. I didn't want to spend all that money somewhere that I felt was going to be taking me backwards. And spoiler alert, it has literally been cheaper to travel the world than to live in some of these big cities. So with that being said, I hadn't necessarily been trying to find myself. I had just been trying to make decisions that honored how I wanted to feel and where I wanted to be. That was as simple as it was. So when I wanted to be alone, I was for weeks or months at a time. When I needed to be around family, I was. When I wanted to see friends, I was. And when I needed to recharge and put my head down again, I was alone again. And this obsession with self-discovery, me, 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 is so lame because when I felt the most fulfilled, the most creative, the most inspired, the happiest was in community. I know as a person, my baseline for how I feel is generally quite low. Like it takes a lot to be above that sustainably, sustainably. I don't know. But there were moments where I would look around and I would see my family and I'd think, wow, I would normally be kind of depressed for where I am right now. But I feel so full, alhamdulillah. And I know that that's a blessing and not everybody has that. But again, I'm just sharing my experience. I'm just saying this to say that, you know, this obsession with wanting to be alone and romanticizing it is really lame. It's really lame. And this is coming from somebody who enjoys and needs to be alone more than I think most people enjoy or can be alone. There were phases where I just really needed to be around people. With family specifically, as someone who grew up in Minneapolis, not having extended family, not having like a real sense of community, I've always felt kind of, um, not to be this like diaspora, like, you know, I don't belong anywhere, but aside from like when I was younger and we'd spend some time in Sudan, I never really had extended time with family. So I think I really needed that. And then when I was ready, I would go back into hiding. So I think Alhamdulillah, I had a really good balance of everything. And that was key. And back to spending time alone, it was the first time in a really long time that I had spent time alone in privacy. And it made me realize that I don't think I valued privacy very much when I was younger. Like I loved to share. I would overshare with anybody who listened to me and I was just a bit naive in that way. So when I discovered this privacy, I became obsessed with it in a way that was oddly comforting. And I know that now this might make me sound like one of those, oh, I'm so private, I move in silence type of people, but I'm innately the opposite of that and I don't think that the YouTuber experience is that universal or relatable so I don't want to spend too much time on it but I will say there is a fine line between protecting yourself and maneuvering out of a crippling fear of perception that I had developed because I treated this obsession like I don't know, the time I learned that I could dye all of my clothes black, it wasn't the same. It was just a new thing that I needed to work through. I didn't know if it was a problem or not. My camera just overheated, so we might be a bit dispositioned, but that was kind of a very rough summary of how it happened. Obviously, in that time, I needed to find a routine that was sustainable because I still needed to work, but I wanted to spend time alone and not undo things that I had learned and I wanted to spend time with family and friends and I still wanted to see the places that I was, but I wasn't, I couldn't be a vacationer. That was not a sustainable thing. And there were, there's, you know, cons, like sometimes I have to take a meeting at three in the morning because I'm on a completely different time zone, but it was worth it. And I made it work, um, and it was just a period of getting very comfortable with having no idea what was going on. I don't have lessons per se, like I don't have a list that I'm gonna go through. I think it's more so overall themes that have been monumental for me. I think my camera's a bit confused by what's going on, so it just freaked out on me. But I think this is a good ending point for this video and a good starting point for the next because I really want to properly talk about all of these different themes. So I guess We'll end it here. Thank you guys for watching. And everybody wants to know who make the sky.
Who make the sun? Who make the moon? Who make the stars? Who gave us life? We want to know. And everybody wants to know. Thank you so much. Oh.